Welcome back to the channel where we explore, learn, and theorize about the Marvel Universe. Today we're going to be covering the major role MODOK and AIM play in Ant-Man 3, the possible death of Scott Lang, and the transition of the role to his daughter, what's going to happen with Evangeline Lilly, and more. So in this video, I'll be breaking down what this all really means, along with what it could mean for Ant-Man 3, Ant-Man the Wasp and Stature, and the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you're new to the channel, I do daily Marvel videos, so be sure to subscribe to never miss out. Let's get started. Marvel recently brought Rick and Morty writer Jeff Loveness on board to pen the script for the upcoming third installment of Ant-Man. Loveness is well acquainted with Marvel and has previously written for the Spider-Man, Brute, and Nova comic book series. So this guy really knows what he's doing when it comes to comedy and Marvel in general, which is a good thing seeing as Ant-Man is known for being silly and making you laugh. I mean, the scene in Ant-Man and the Wasp where he's under house arrest and he's having the time of his life is hilarious. And maybe it's something we should all be learning to do right now and trying to be more like Scott Lang, making the best out of a bad situation. And Luis. Oh, Luis. If you, like me, think that Luis is one of the best parts of the Ant-Man movies, then I know you can't wait to see what we get from him now. On the other hand, in some unfortunate news that could have easily been avoided, MCU star Evangeline Lilly's dismissive comments about the current situation have caused a major controversy online. With the actress's troubling attitude towards staying home and shocking belief that what's happening is fake is angering many fans, with many demanding that Marvel completely remove her from the franchise at once. While they won't do that, at least not yet, due to contractual obligations, we have heard the studio will be reducing her role in Ant-Man 3. Evangeline Lilly's Hope Van Dyne will no longer be the three equals co-lead, which will require some reworking of the proposed storyline. From what's been said, the new plan is to bump up the role of Emma Furman's Cassie Lang, Scott's daughter. Apparently, Ant-Man 3 was going to have Scott and Hope team up once again to go on some sort of globe-trotting adventure, which would have been comparable to a James Bond movie. Given the backlash that's risen up against Lily though, the focus will now shift more towards the relationship between Scott and his daughter, mostly in terms of Cassie becoming stature, her superhero alter ego, and Scott mentoring her. Since Ant-Man, Cassie wanted to be Scott's partner, but was undeniably too young. However, after the snap, she's now much older, and if you didn't know, the Young Avengers are coming soon. Almost every single character has been introduced or confirmed to be coming, leading to the team-up happening as early as Avengers 5. But Kevin Feige revealed to The Hollywood Reporter back in 2015 that actors are signed for a minimum three-movie deal across the board. Rudd is on a three-plus-plus deal. That means that with four appearances already, Ant-Man, Captain America Civil War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and a fifth in Ant-Man 3, this could possibly be his last one. Which sadly goes along perfectly with what happens in the comics, where Cassie Lang becomes stature after Scott's death. After the divorce of her parents, Scott joined the Avengers. Cassie spent much of her time with him living in the Avengers mansion. She loved and admired him, and formed a strong relationship with the rest of the team. She even referred to Tony Stark as Uncle Tony. Unbeknownst to anyone though, Cassie used this time to secretly expose herself to Pym Particles, in the hopes that she could be a superhero like her father. Eventually, Ant-Man's friend Jack of Hearts dies, and when he inexplicably lands on the Avengers Mansion grounds, Scott went to greet him. However, Jack exploded and Scott was incinerated leaving some skeletal remains in the newly formed crater. Cassie was left without the love and support of her father, who was her inspiration, her hero, and so much more. The man who had meant so much to her had died, and this led to her taking on the mantle of stature and joining the Young Avengers. This brings us to the main villain of the movie. In the comics, the mental organism designed only for killing, better known as MODOK, was originally an AIM scientist named George Tarleton from Erie, Pennsylvania. He was recruited to work on the organization's development of the Cosmic Cube. However, AIM would eventually mutagenically alter Tarleton, turning him into MODOK with a C, or mental organism designed only for computing. He would later rebel against his masters and adopt the name MODOK with a K. AIM, or Advanced Idea Mechanics, was already introduced on a much smaller scale in Iron Man 3, with Aldrich Killian being the leader, but instead of the guys in yellow hazmat suits running around, it focused more on the extremist project and followed one of the main MCU plots of creating super soldiers. However, in Iron Man 3 The Official Game, MODOK is actually Aldrich Killian. Before he dies at the hands of Pepper Potts in Iron Man 3, AIM downloads Killian's consciousness and transforms him into MODOK. Upon becoming MODOK, he seeks revenge against Tony Stark and his allies. 
which could be a really interesting take on introducing MODOK into the MCU through a returning villain. Although I think they should introduce Tarleton as MODOK, they could do a Trevor Slattery type thing, where Killian's pretending to be MODOK, but then it's literally the Iron Man 3 story again. It was revealed that Paul Rudd received a screenplay credit on his first film, a writing credit on the second, and wrote an early script for the third one that featured MODOK. However, whether or not his pitch makes it to the final draft is unknown, but anything's possible, especially if they need to make major changes due to Lily's smaller role in screen time. On the other hand, I already covered how the Fantastic Four could be introduced in this movie, and it could also be an interesting story teaching us more about the Quantum Realm, and also finally introducing the first family to the MCU. Long story short, Reed Richards and Hank Pym were working on a secret project for S.H.I.E.L.D. to find the Negative Zone. Reed, along with his wife Susan Storm, her brother Johnny, and their best friend Ben Grimm, traveled to the Quantum Realm but were trapped. Eventually, when Janet Van Dyne goes subatomic, she finds them down there and they work together to get out. But Kang the Conqueror lives in the city we saw called Chronopolis, and is preventing them from escaping. This would also fit perfectly with the Young Avengers, as he's one of their main villains. Anyways, the whole point would be to try and save them and bring them back to the current timeline. Lastly, Pate and Reed has previously talked about MODOK on multiple occasions, saying that comedian John Hodgman has asked him about the character several times before. And MODOK is one of the only characters still receiving an adult-oriented animated series for Hulu. At one point, MODOK was supposed to cross over with Howard the Duck, Hitmonkey, and Tiger and Dazzler in a series called The Offenders. Since the initial announcement, all series have been cancelled besides MODOK and Hitmonkey. It seems like the character is extremely popular and you never know what might happen. So let me know what you think about this. Will we see MODOK in Ant-Man the Wasp in stature? And if not, what villain would you like to see them take on? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you'll never miss another video. Thanks for watching, and remember to wash your hands and stay safe.